now we have with us Mona Radwan, writer and storyteller. Uh, Mona Radwan writes a weekly article in the prestigious magazine, Rosal Youssef, and she writes short stories. Two of them are published in a joint collection of stories, and recently three more stories were published in another joint collection called Seven Senebel. Mona, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you. Uh, is this your first time to participate in the Cairo International Book Fair and what are you expecting from this year's edition? Okay, last year I participated with a collection of short stories. They were uh, published among a group. Uh, so officially this is my second participation. But this year I have a, a full book of 19 full stories that is completely solely uh, published under my name. How do you assess Egypt's key role in spreading culture in the region? I have to tell you the way that the, the Egyptian people are being structured all over the world makes them true ambassadors of our culture. Our culture goes beyond the pyramids and the sphinx and those kind of stuff. We also have a huge heritage of cultural books and novelists and writers. I must say, um, Egypt is not only a go-to place uh, when we talk about tourist, tourism, it's also a go-to place when we think about reading books and definitely a very, very inspirational location that gives many, many authors and people a lot of ideas to write and definitely many, many more memories. Definitely. And uh, why are you interested in short stories in particular? Okay, I think or I believe, this is my genuine belief, that short stories is the trend of the modern time. The fact that the person holds a book and keeps it with 700 or 800 pages to go through them, it's a little bit uh, too slow for life's rhythm now. This is the first thing. The second thing, I find short stories equally enriching and amusing. Uh, they are 10, 15 pages at, at most. But they have everything, they have the story, they have the trick, they have the twist, and sometimes they have the laugh and the joy and the memory as well. Do you think that it's because we live in a fast-paced world and people um, have limited time to read, perhaps short, short stories are uh, the best thing to do right now instead of dedicating more time to reading a full book? If you ask me, I think yes, life's dynamics is becoming the main driver for short stories to become... Uh, uh, I don't want to say trending, they were always there, but they are more uh, approachable now. Plus, if you think about Nagib Mahfouz and uh, so many other writers, uh, their novels were very, very suitable to be done in movies. Short stories are like 10, 15 movies in one book, and you can definitely go through them at your own convenience. Um, finally, your uh, latest, um, this is not my final question, your latest book is titled Personal Effort Notebook. What does this title refer to? Okay, this is the, the, the exact translation. In Arabic, it's called Kashkul um, al-Maghud al It is uh, very similar to what we used to do our homework through back in the 70s. I'm, I'm one of the 70s born people. Uh, at that time, uh, we used to have this multi-purpose notebook to do our homework there. It was called Kashkul al Magul al okay? Uh, and the translation is personal effort because we used to do the homework there. So it was our personal contribution to the lessons that we took and we do the homework there. To me, it is my personal contribution. Uh, I decided to put this uh, under that title, uh, covering the 19 stories I have. The book has 19 stories. Uh, 12 are in uh, Arabic. Uh, and seven are in slang Egyptian. The new book includes several different short stories. All of them happen during um, only like 45 minutes or so. So connecting different topics with a theme, are you considering adopting this strategy in your future work? I am I'm always pro having one line to connect all the stories together. So in my first book, I chose the time, the element of time. 45 minutes of a fixed duration, and 45 minutes are a lot. So many things happen there. You can go from country to country in 45 minutes. You can watch a full uh, half uh, football match in 45 minutes. 
the, the school lesson is 45 minutes. So 45 minutes can be a very, very impactful time. And I am pro having one line to connect all the stories together, aside from choosing one title from the book to give it to the full uh, book itself. So my choice was time, very important element, and the 45 time minutes is what connects everything in my book. That's very interesting. Now, uh, you have been working in the field of information technology since your graduation from the Faculty of Engineering. Do you believe that your scientific background actually helped you in writing or is it totally a separate world? You know, uh, when people come from a different perspective or a different background, they bring their own view of things. I'm 100% sure that when you're an engineer and then you write or when you're a doctor and then you write, you come from a different world. Right? This is the first thing. The second thing is, um, when you think about writing, writing is a way of expressing yourself. Any human can do that. Some people do it by writing, some people doing, do it through other things. So I think, yes, uh, where we come from impacts a lot the way we write, what we see, and the vision. We see things differently sometimes. Um, I also want to know from you about uh, how, uh, from your own point of view, can we encourage youth and children to read? Because apparently these days, youth and children are so attached to iPads and electronic gadgets. Um, perhaps parents need to do more effort to encourage their, their children to read. What do you think of that? They need to do more personal effort. And the parents need to read themselves, right? Think about it. It goes beyond the youth. People grow up to do what their parents used to do, okay? So uh, becoming the role model will have the youth, to co they will copy them in, in that. This is the first thing. The second thing, reading has gone beyond a physical book. We have e-books, we have digital uh, publishers and publish publications, so they can still go technology-wise, and the paper pack book is also there. So definitely parents play a huge role in making this run in their new generations. You, you, you think that uh, books will remain, printed books will remain, and, um, or digital books are going to replace uh, the, the, uh, the printed books sometime? No, I don't think one, the, the electronic books will not demolish paper packs, and paper packs will not demolish electronically. Why? Because people have a different perspective and mindset. Some people like to hold the book and hug it, okay, and smell it. And smell it. You're absolutely right. They like to smell the paper. And other people, they go electronically, and they believe in gadgets, like technology, technology ones, and they go for it. So this is like telling me uh, apples or oranges. Some people like apples. Some people will still like oranges. It's a different thing. They're not, they're not, they're not the same at all. And uh, Mona Radwan, writer and storyteller, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Pleasure is mine. And ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. More segments coming up on your way here on La Cruz.